You're listening to Marriage Takeover with Eric and Tamika Thompson, helping to enrich your marriage. One. Welcome to Marriage Takeover. I'm your girl, Tamika. I'm your boy, E-Rock, Nim. And you know we keep it real. We keep it raw. And we keep it uncut. All day. <laughs> and this is Marriage Takeover. Yes, sir. Welcome to another month. We are excited to have Woo! you here. Woo! Another month. Here we go. <laughs> we are so excited to have you here. Listen, y'all know how we do it here. We like to keep it real and raw. And today... <laughs> We no patrolling, no chases. <laughs> we have uh, an amazing couple that we wanted to bring on. Amazing. Before we dive in, one of the things that we want to remind you of that this month, the 21st of March, is the National Black Marriage Day. Yes. And so we are going to be spotlighting. So hug your boo <laughs> on the 21st. <laughs> Spot- <laughs> we are going to be celebrating black marriages all around the world. So if you want to be spotlighted, Make sure that you send us an email. Yep. It's going to be marriage takeover at gmail.com. Send us an email, send us a pic, let us know your names, let us know how long you've been married. Yes. And we are going to make sure that we are celebrating you on this month. Yes. Right, yes. So we are going to go ahead and get started. Hey, without further ado, okay, you're there. Hey, we're <laughs> going to go ahead and we're going to welcome uh-huh, Isaac and Tasha Smith, excuse me, Clinton. And Tasha Smith from Restoration um, Ministries. Uh, it's a couple's ministry that they have, and they have a wonderful story to tell. Now, we've known this couple now for, oh my gosh, how many? About 20 years at least, right? At least 21. Because both of our sons just turned 21. So at least 21. Yeah, I'm muted. I'm muted. So um, at least 21 years. And yeah. We are so excited to have this couple on here. So let me give you all just a teaser, right? So this couple was married, <laughs> divorced, and then remarried. I say, hold on, <laughs> married, divorced, and remarried. Whoa! So if you are out there thinking about, because you know this COVID has had everybody and every marriage kind of on the rocks. You have not put boundaries in place and different things have come up in your homes and in your marriages and everybody is talking about divorce. Everybody. So before you get to that point, we wanted to bring a couple on so they can testify, tell you about their journey, tell you about their experience. So without further ado, welcome. Hey, welcome. Tasha Smith. Hello. Hello. Can y'all hear us? Me, yeah, me, 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 me. me. <laughs> awesome. So tell us a little bit about yourself. Tell us how long you've been married. Number one. Oh, I, 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 I guarantee you Tasha's you know. writing this down, so you might want to take it down. <laughs> I guarantee you Tasha's writing it down. <laughs> yeah. Because uh <laughs> what? What's the question? I got you. No I'm problem. Glad you know me that well. I'm <laughs> I think I would say cumulatively, we have been married 24 years. 20? 24? 23. One of them. You'll get the right one. Oh, don't get in trouble, dog. Don't get in trouble. Oh, hey, hey, Lord Jesus. Friend. 25 years. Maybe 25 years. Thank you. I have to do my math. One plus one. I work on computers. We work with zeros and ones. <laughs> <laughs> so, yes. so, so 25 years. Uh, had a 20 year, 20 years and three day career in the United States Marine Corps as a Sweet. nice United States Marine. And she's been there with me the actual, the entire time. Um, and. Other than that, uh, I'm going to let you let her talk now. This is Tasha Monique Smith. Oh Sweet. Thank you. Hello. 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 Hey, hey, hey. According to my husband, there's a there's an app to calculate the cumulative <laughs> amount of time that we've been married. Because, you know, he had to make sure he threw in those 17 months that we were not legal. <laughs> so he found an app to actually add it up and subtract. I said, look at here. I'm still here. It's 25 years. How about that? We're going to just write the Lord's math. <laughs> right, right. So tell us about your journey. So a little bit kind of about our platform is we like to make sure that we're helping marriages, right? Absolutely. So tell us about your journey, how you got to, how long were you all married before Look, you went through divorce? How to get, you know, take us to ground zero, oh, if yeah. you don't mind. Okay. Take us to ground, ground zero. zero. Yeah. Uh, okay. Uh, Right. Oh. The, the short version of Brown Zero. 
you know, <laughs> some of them might have to condense. You know, I can be short term. I can be sort of short. Okay. Um, but the one thing I will say that was very significant that we found out on our wedding day, May twenty fifth, ninety six, was Ooh. that my mom, um, who was previously an alcoholic. She was in rehab when we first moved here. She had to be taken to rehab um, just from dark times. And I was like nine years old. Come to find out on our wedding day that his mother was my mother's nurse when they were in rehab. Wow. Mind you, it was 1984 when my mom went to rehab. I didn't meet him until 1988. But our parents were already intertwined. Oh wow! My mother only stayed in rehab for two weeks because of his mom. She sat with her. She prayed with her because my mom was saved. She was just in a backslidden condition, so she prayed with her. She read with her. My mom came home two weeks later and has not touched a drink since. And that was praise God. God. Praise God. God. Oh, so man. we, I know for a fact, we were destined. <laughs> wow! Y'all. So. so I mean, yes, we no, found that out right. on our wedding day. That was that was that was like what on our wedding day? Wow! 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 So regardless of, I just need to put this out here. Regardless of what she says, um, I come from good loins. I come. I, 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 <laughs> you come from good loins. I just want to put that out there and make sure you. Know, <laughs> I come from some good loins. Okay? Yes, you do. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> but, yes, you do. I do. I, we, I, we both. We we fir I first met uh, this young lady. She was a cheerleader at a. Well, I'll leave that alone. I'll just say she was a cheerleader. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise him. Praise him. Yes. I understand. High five. Okay. Well, <laughs> yeah. I'm just gonna leave that there, sis. I I, I hear you, but I I'm gonna leave that there. So we, we met on a church trip going to um, Magic Mount in San Diego, or not, Magic Mount, where's it? Valencia. Uh, Valencia, California. It's a theme park. Yeah, it's a theme park. My, uh, I got invited by my god brother. My god brother bought his girlfriend. His girlfriend bought, brought uh, her cousin, which happened to be Tasha Smith. So mm. we got on the bus to go. We paid our fare, and I'm walking towards the back of the bus, and I, I see her for a second, and my Jerry curl stuck up. It was just like, hold on, like, hold wow. on one second, hold on one second. You say your Jerry curl, so you gonna have to start that story. Yeah, I have like, a picture to prove it. Hey, oh my gosh! I have a picture. Did she? Mm -hmm. No, no picture. Oh my god. Oh, okay. Uh -oh. Can you see that? <laughs> All of that. Yeah. Was a, a, a Jerry curl about yeah about that high. Yeah, and it had about. Six months of new growth, so it's only curly. He at said the end. Six months of new growth. <laughs> yeah, it, it, was, it was really thick. So, needless to say, that you know, you know what, I, I thought I was still cute and somewhat attractive. I come to find out that she was not attracted to me at all because it looked like I had just uh, taken and, and put together balls of yarn and stuff like that on my head. And I was looking at her like, wow, she's so gorgeous, she was just so beautiful. And but she could give me the time of day. I couldn't share the, the air that we breathe in the same in the same vehicle. I was just like, wow, she's not like that. But anyways, <laughs> needless to say that we had an awesome day, an awesome time, and we went our separate ways when we got to the theme park and we were on our way back and somehow, some way she uh ended up feeling ill. She had a little fever. I did. She had, All of a yeah, she was out of nowhere for whatever reason. And while she's sitting up there, you know, trying to fan herself and trying to get cool and trying to get comfortable, of course, me, because believe it or not, I was still suave back then. I take no. a little, I took a little, seat. yeah, I took a little cold bottle, which had been in the cooler with, with ice, so it was nice and cold. And I go to the back of the bus where she's sitting, and I sit next to her, and I start to put the Coke on her hand and just wrap it around her neck and wrap it around her face. She was like, oh, you're so kind. I was like, yeah. In spite of my Jerry Curl, I am still one of the nicest guys ever, you will ever meet. Because I am here in your time of need. Why all these, all my other cousins were looking at you like, oh man, she's just fine. I was like, yeah. But I'm sitting next to you. Your soul glow. Yeah, I was pretty.
pretty interesting. So, well, and then we went off from there, but yeah, you're gonna have to check the details from this. That's about Let's, right. You, you did good, dear. Oh, really? I'm so full. Mark, that, mark that on the calendar. I did good today, right now, just now. You did good today. <laughs> <laughs> so, what led to you all kind of getting to that point? Because I know you were in ministry together, because that was how we met you all. We met yes. you all. We were because just of moving, ministry, right? right? We were just moving to the area, moving from Alaska to the area, mm -hmm. and it was recommended. Um, that the pastor at the time that we were, um, that you all were kind of uh, attending the church with, that we kind of check out their ministry to kind of see what they were doing, all those great things. So we went to the picnic, and that was kind of how we met you all. And then it was kind of from there, we just kind of kicked it in. So tell us about your journey from that time in ministry and what led up to you all getting to that breaking point. When we met you, we were literally just coming off of living saved for real we went um our first duty station was hawaii and in hawaii we met like georgella anthony and georgella Wright, um the um um jeff and tressie bolden we, we met the people who meant the most to our lives even today wow. and we didn't even know we were going to be set up that way yeah. um once we left hawaii we came back here to san diego and then ended up in virginia and come to find out my husband is actually related to our pastor and first lady that we had when you guys came. Um, wow. Yeah, that's my, my, my husband's cousins. So we didn't even know that they were there. God set wow. up so amazingly because they were around the corner. They did daycare. They took the kids. It was amazing. And we started going. Wow, okay. Um, so like my first Sunday there, he had me speak when we were still in the hotel, like before you guys came or right when you guys came, we were in the hotel. Yeah. Um, so that was my my uh that was our in induction into that ministry and we were really really looking to do you know what god called us to do um but also being active military being young having small kids um learning each other in marriage because we were barely talk uh, about that by the time oh, you met. Now, pause talk about yeah. that talk about learning each mm -hmm. other in marriage Oh yeah, oh, you got like, that's, that's, a <laughs> that's a whole oh, different. That's a whole different walk. It's one thing to know each other when you're dating, but to know each other when you're married. Married. <laughs> oh man, you and I, you got oh, to now because I know that there's always three sides to every story. So I, I do want to hear. <laughs> I want to hear your side and your side. <laughs> well. And we I we gonna say later. <laughs> I, can, I can honestly say that uh, in in his first those initial years, it was really difficult because I was experienced, but I was still young in the Marine Corps, and I it was really difficult trying to balance out Christ like behavior and Christian values within the world's greatest uh, killing organization. Should I say, for lack of a better description, it's, it, we, the Marines. They don't play. They don't care if you got a machine gun or a pin. Somehow, some way, right. uh, you are a weapon with anything. You have the mind. Right. Set, period. So, all that and having the Holy Ghost was was was. It didn't mix real. <laughs> it didn't mix well at all. So I had a really hard time trying to learn that balance uh, uh, as growing up. Uh -huh. you know, first five years, first ten years. It was it was pretty tumultuous. Should I say? Should I say? I think huh? one of the things that going into marriage, we were together <laughs> off and on for like four years before we even got married. Um, when we got married, we were already parents. We had already had our oldest daughter, so uh -huh. we number one we didn't okay. start off being able to be married first. We started off being an instant family and mm. running right into career because he was already in the military when um, when we had TR. So learning each other, learning how to be married, learning uh, how to be parents, and then at 21, 22 years old, still trying to figure out what you want to do in your own life. Right. right. All of that compiled and then trying to go into ministry, that was not the way to do it. Not at all. Um, I will say that prayer was not the leading force originally mm. when we became one we were not praying together we were not you know doing all those things together originally 
going through the years now is the only time we're actually seeing that, uh, that is the only way. That's the only way. And that's how we got to the point where we divorced because God was no longer number one. Wow. 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 So, so, wow. so, so oh, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, I was going to say, um, I will say that in those years when we met you and we were, I mean, thick as thieves, our kids, our sons was preaching at two years old. <laughs> <laughs> like, like, it was kind of like we were some thugs now. You can't, you can't, you can't, you can't do that. Uh, the other ones were I mean, they, they, hey, they was our worship leaders. We just came behind them right after they did praise and worship. That's all. Hey. So, hey. <laughs> They did what they knew. Both of them would lead in praise and worship, and then all of us would just follow. I right, mean, right. It was, it was worked wonderful. Um, but I honestly will say to you guys, before we even go on, I thank you for being our friends, even back then, because we were a hot blumpkin mess, and most people didn't know it, but y'all did. <laughs> I think we were all a hot mess. <laughs> try to balance is and it's in me even though sometimes I don't believe it it is it's in me to be a worshiper as a musician so yes. I was a musician I was always able to stop I was, I was <laughs> don't say that it's in you to be a worshiper sir you are a worshiper boom let's correct let's correct the script <laughs> You are a worshiper, and, and I say this: you are the only, only. I know one other person. You are the only person I've ever known on the keyboard that will stop playing because you are experiencing God for yourself. Yes, I knew yes. one drummer, <laughs> one drummer who did the same thing he because, there and go. because they were worshiping God when the presence of the Lord fell into place. Right, so. Yeah. You are a worshiper, sir. Not that hey. it's in you, but you are a worshiper, sir. Hey, I, this is my favorite. This has always been my favorite pose when I look at my brother Clinton. He'll be playing the presence fall in. He will lean back and his hands will be sliding <laughs> across the keyboard. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, wait a minute, Lord. Give me one second. Mm -hmm. What is going on over here? Yeah. So deep into the push. I'm a... Oh, no, I gotta leave you alone. I'm like, I just gotta think about it. But not you are, you are a worshiper because the atmosphere changes yeah. when you enter in. I'm gonna leave that alone. Yeah. I'm gonna say that. Because I know everybody now asking, well, if you that strong of a worshiper, how did you get to where you were? Man, it's, it, I, I tell you, that, that level of intimacy, it, it inherits, uh, a lot of a lot of trickery from the enemy that looks so well it looks so good and it, and, and it tastes good 
it is like okay well you worship so well that's that's cool but what if you do this here what if you do this there can we get you mm. here can we you know there you know can you can you do what you do over here or with wow. other and before i knew it i was I was going place to place, not just physically, but also in my emotions. Like people would ask me and just take me to different places where I probably shouldn't have been because of my level of maturity. Right. But it, it caused me to be confused and lose a little, lose a lot of focus. Wow. On who I was worshiping and who was I worshiping with? Because it, it kind of inter, 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 say intertwined with. My level of intimacy. I'm, I'm saying to myself and thinking to myself, Lord, this is what you gave me. This is what I want to do. I don't want this to be, to be taken away. But at the same time, this is what they need over here. This is what they need over there. This ministry. I mean, I'm, I've gone from Okinawa, Japan, to Hawaii, to Guam, to, to different places, and it's throughout the time. It was just. It became uh, less intimate and more of a, like an right. obligation. Right. You're anointed. To yeah. Yeah. You got you. You 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 bring the presence of God. So you got to be here. Absolutely. The Lord. The Lord spoke to me and said, "You're gonna do this." Really, I'm like, and being so young, I was just, I was just really. After a while, it became really confusing. And before I knew it, I turned around. I'm like, "Okay, Lord, where are you at?" We used to get it on pretty good. Mm -hmm. He's like, you know, you're, you know, you got your talent, but your heart's far from me because I, you're just, you're not there anymore. You're there, but you're not there. So that wow. is. Uh, a lot of the, the that I'll I'll just say for lack of a better word the hell came in. Yeah, because mm. I, I lost the focus, the focus of that reality, the focus of that intimacy with my God. It wasn't just me and Him. It was just mm -hmm. uh, me and whoever I can go wherever I can go and tag and take my family. I mean, right. it was deep to the point, and I'll just use this as an example. When we first got to Hawaii, I had uh, he wasn't a bishop at the time, but he was a Pastor. He was a pastor at the time. They had been praying for a musician for like 18 months or something like that. So wow. when we first got to the island, somehow, I wouldn't say somehow, but he said the Lord had spoke to him and said, you play, looked at me, he looked at my wife and said, you sing. And he said, please come back. I brought my keyboard there one time. And I kid you not, for people who have been deprived of music in a, in a sanctuary for months, they got music, they bucked. And I mean, they mm. bucked for, wow. for a couple Hour. of hours. Yes. I was tired, I was sore, but it was a blessing to them. And, and I think then, I played the drums. Yes, yeah. Oh, and, I was like, yeah, they were, they, were, they were pretty desperate. But the thing that got, that I really started to notice was when he talked to me and I came back again, he asked me to come back in. He was like, Look, I'm gonna sit you down. He invited us to dinner, in fact, with his family, his, his wife and, and family. And he said, Look, let me just put it to you like this. I know you're on one side of the island. We're on the other side of the island. He said, If if you could dedicate yourself to play here, he said, You your fridge would never be empty. Mm -hmm. He said, If you need to get from there to here, I will supply the transportation for you. He said, You never have to worry about nothing. I was a young E4, just got to Hawaii. With a pregnant wife and, 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 and a one-year-old child, um, wow! And he was like, he was smack dead serious. Yeah. And I was like, uh, this this was a little overwhelming. I said, I want to go and I want to praise and I want to worship freely. He said, but uh -huh. having yeah, having, having this responsibility of going over there to now, I got to be here. I got to be here for rehearsal. I got to back up the pastor wherever he goes. All of this stuff, and I was like, eh. it slowly began to just wedge in between my my relationship with my God. It, it was many, many situations like that that just began to wedge and wedge and to wedge. And before I knew it, I was far away from where I had, you know, originally began. And I'm, that is so good that you say that. Oh, go ahead, Tasha. I was, I was just going to say for myself, after um, experiencing so much hurt in church. Hold on, hold on. Hold on just a second before you go into that one. I wanted to I wanted to focus on because Eric and I we talk about a lot because what a lot of people don't understand is the roles. And we talk about how, of course, you know, Christ is the head. And then, you know, above every woman is man, and above every man is you have God. And when the husband is not in alignment, 
then things change. And so you gave a pivotal example that I think a lot of times we don't mention in ministry a lot because right. you, you're saying, hey, listen, they're saying, I want to work. I want to do these things. I want to serve God. But what sometimes happens, and I'm not saying this happened in your case, but what sometimes happens is the leader of that ministry, because they have a need, sometimes they will prostitute the gift. And they don't understand the damage that it does to the family. And so one of the things that we've been talking about, and we even mentioned um, a couple of episodes ago, is in First Timothy and how they were talking about, and so I just want to read this reference to scripture really quick. They were talking about in First Timothy, um, starting at First Timothy 3, and it was just talking about how when you are, um, some of the requirements that they were requiring for mm -hmm. the apostles and the overseers and how you couldn't be the drunkard. So in verse 3, it says, you must not be a heavy drinker or be violent. Right. You must be gentle, not quarrelsome, and not love money. You must manage his own family well, yep. having children who respect and obey him. And a lot of times we get so lost in that when we go to ministry because we think we're doing the right things. We think we're going to those you know places. And then we start to neglect our first ministry, which is our home. Which is the house. Amen. And that's what that's what messed me in the beginning. Because when, like I said, when we finally turned our lives over to the Lord 100%, um, I was being mentored by the evangelists and by the ministers and the elders um, in the church. And they were amazing teaching, you know, how to pray, how to keep your family together and all that. However... <clears throat> The main thing that was being driven into me at the time was wearing braids, having my earrings, um, making sure that my dresses were, you know, certain lengths and all those yeah, things. Baby, that's the thing. I've always done, and I've always done that. However, now you're telling me that I have to look a certain way that my husband is not going to go for. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> Hallelujah. <laughs> What you say? You can stay home in your bathroom. Go in your bathroom outside. So it was. It was that to the point where I did not know which way to go because I wanted to be in ministry, but I'm also trying to submit to this new husband. Who oh, not, easy to, not easy to submit to at all. And then being mom to babies, um, learning just how to be, 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 be a person. But for me, it was what was ingrained in me to be a wife, to be a saved wife. That didn't do what was necessary for me to grow up as a wife, as as the evangelist, as the minister, as God called me to be the teacher, the intercessor, all of those things, and be mom. And nothing that they were helping me with helped that. What it did is it put me in a position where I was trying so hard to be godly that I was following, okay, I can't pay my hair no more. I can't do this. I got to be up here and I got to do all this. And this one is like, okay, go ahead. I'm going to look at everything else. <laughs> right, right. Well, that's, exactly real. What, that's, that's, so real. that's real. That is so, so real. So let's talk about that because a lot of times what we try to do now, now again, is how your, your relationship is with God. But I know I struggle with that. And the ministry that we were a part of, it was just the organization that was how they were. Like there was, you know, no right. pants. It was the dresses and the long skirts. Yep. I was just yep. like, wait a second. I'm used to wearing booty shorts with holes in them. Like what's going on? <laughs> and not yep. only that, it, it's, it's where you are used to, like we have husbands, right? <laughs> who yep. are Roman, who yep. I, I remember when Eric, and even then I think at that time, he was wearing sunglasses. He whenever he wore sunglasses, and I knew somebody cute was walking by. I was trying to get underneath the sunglasses, like, "What you looking at?" You trying, <laughs> trying to follow my sight. I'm trying to follow the sight. Right? <laughs> because here again, it's that struggle where you are bound by law because that's what they're teaching, and not by grace. And so you fall under underneath something that's completely different. Oh that not God even, even designed for you. Hey, hey, I'm just I'm just gonna say this real quick. No. Uh, we, gotta follow, <laughs> we gotta follow the Lord on this one because uh, somebody's somebody's getting help right now. Because <laughs> the question I wanted to ask is what's more valuable valuable the home or the church building? 
the home, home number one absolutely the home right the the home the home so but uh -huh. No, go ahead. I want to hear it. Go ahead. I want to hear it. Go ahead. You know I got to hear what I got to say. I'm already doing. I'm already doing. I'm already doing. I'm already doing. I Everybody praise yourself now. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I just, I believe it, it is the home. It really is the quality of the home. Because you can't enter nobody else's building. Right. Out. If you do, that's you're you're not going to benefit that's the truth. Right. that building, and that's where I can honestly say we can, we found ourselves spiritually over uh -huh. so many years trying mm -hmm. to work and trying to do. Even though I knew the Lord called me to ministry, and the Lord called my husband to ministry, we never heard the call to ministry together as a couple, mm -hmm. and we never knew how to how to. He do his, me do mine, but we're one. That doesn't make any sense. So right. every duty okay. station, every duty yeah. station, every church, we've had counseling. We've been under the pastor, first lady, you know, with, with the things that we've worked in church, whether it's been in music, armor bearing, um, altar usher. working, usher. I, I, I've been through the whole gamut all my life. However, what I did not learn was how to be in ministry and be married at the same time. Come on now. Hey, hey, <laughs> hey we can't jump episodes here. We can't jump episodes here. <laughs> I'm married. You, and you, that you is real. a beautiful, oh, that's, a, that's, a, that's such a key point. But I also wanted to highlight, Asashi, you also sing, you are an amazing worshiper. So yeah. how is it? Hold on, time out. I'm glad you brought that up. Go ahead. I just, I just want to say this real quick. <laughs> Tag, oh, here we go. Okay. <laughs> I want to say this real quick. I blame I blame YouTube for where I am because if y'all had not been up there doing praise and worship because y'all had so good time, I would have never been on my face and the Lord would not have to say the additional instructions that he had given me. So I just want to let you know I blame you all. Please oh, thank you. I'll take that one. I'll take that one. Yeah, I'll, I'll take so that one. <laughs> how is it that I Clinton, I keep Clinton. Listen, listen, everybody, he's Clinton, but that's my brother. We call him Isaac, so you're gonna hear you gonna hear Isaac all the time. Same person, though, just same, so y'all know we same person. So, <laughs> so those of you that listen on the podcast, we're not the same person. <laughs> so how is it that your husband from each assignment that he's been able to go on in ministry the, as the musician, you are seen as the same when it came to the worshiping? Wow. As a singer. Wow. 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 The other part, though, the other part with that, though, Ooh. was when I was recognized and I started singing a whole lot more, as oh. well as writing my plays and doing my drama, which is what I love. I've been doing it all my life. He was not ready for the influx of what I was doing. It wasn't oh. just me singing, but now it was. 85 people asking me, can you sing with me? Can you come here? Can you come here? Um, we went to the BET uh, gospel celebration with uh, with Tone. We, I mean, we were doing so much as a married, Christian, saved couple with kids, but we were never married. We were a saved couple who had the talent, the calling, and the gifts, but we were never looked at as that's his wife. She's his husband. He's her husband. She has to still fall in line with what he would like. Right. So, wow. Everything that he wanted and didn't want was completely opposite of what I did or did not want. So every wow. time we went to counseling, we were saying the same words, but we were feeling differently about it. So all the words that were being said and all the guidance and all that we were getting, it was great in words. Now, practical application was something totally different because we didn't have those tools. Yeah. We just knew we were supposed to. So you pray, you read, you, you sing, fast. you fast, you pray, you read, you sing, you fast, you pray. <laughs> and then it's 10 years of singing, fasting, praying, and pure hell in your house. Wow, come on now. Let's talk about it. Because... So, it, people hey, people I, will tell you, well, you got the Holy Ghost. You should know what you should be and shouldn't be doing in your marriage and all this. Um, hold up. First and foremost, if we're young and we're coming to the elders. Come on now. 
for direction. Come and on. All you can tell me is to go home, pray, read, fast, and study. Wow. But here, if, I, I think, if, if my okay. tools worked, we probably wouldn't have got to that. My wow. Right. <laughs> wow. So, hey, if you're just if you just now joining us, you you know you're a part of you're listening to Marriage Takeover. We have Tasha and uh, Clinton Smith with Restoration Ministries, a uh, marriage ministry out of San Diego, California. Uh, and so they're here telling us their uh, their story. And so, man, y'all got into y'all just joined into the meat of everything. So, <laughs> and so what was the question you was getting ready to ask, honey? I forgot. Oh, and so, and so, but you know, but you know, you know, the, the one thing, the one thing that I recognize. Oh, is I remember. That, oh, you remember that? I remember. All right, go ahead. So no, I was going to say a lot of times I found that a lot of the elders, although they were elders in the church, they didn't have the answers. <laughs> they didn't have the tools because it's. So if you think about, if you think about cycles, yeah. If you think about. I don't even want to say generational curses. No, no, you, you really can't. So, yeah, right. So, so with, that, with that analogy, but if you think just about how leadership does what leadership has always done, right? And they just pass it down because that's all exactly. they know to do. Exactly. And so you can the same cycle exactly. without breaking it because you don't have that relate, or you are not even that you don't have that relationship, but because you are hearing from God and you are being obedient to God then what happens is you continue to trickle that same, same thing, thing down. But, and I think that was why we were always like the black sheep or the rebels because we were like, wait a second. It's got to be better than this. God didn't tell us that. God didn't tell us that. We got to revisit this. Right, because, right. you know, I had, I had, um, you know, we was, we was together at one ministry where I was, where I was told, well, uh, how would you feel if I sit you down because I didn't show up on a Sunday? Because of what we already had planned to do. I was like Well, it was because what? our son had a football game. And so for No 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 not not not, not, that not the, the, when we was with them. It was during that time. Okay. And so mm-hmm. I was like, uh, I said, Well mm-hmm. yeah. I said, well, hey, you the pastor, you do what you gotta do. Right. But I mean, I because at this point I know I knew that I, something about if I cannot minister how can I administer effectively if my house is in shambles? Right. Mm-hmm. And so when I understood that, it was, okay, I need to hold my house here, and I need to put the church building here. Now, this is not to say, let me just jump, throw this caveat in. Oh, no, no, no. I don't want y'all leaders coming for us. Do you come? I'm telling so, you. You better come. Right. <laughs> so, I'm all I'm saying. You better come right. You better come right. <laughs> so what it was. This is not a thing is to be disrespectful to the authority of the house, but it's also to say that your marriage, your family is the first ministry and your husband of that home is the king, priest and prophet of that home. And that the wives have to come into alignment with what he is saying, what he is doing. So I wanted to make sure that we put that out there to be clear. Go ahead. Now, this part right here is the part that started the downfall. Yes. Okay. Okay. We both. I feel like I feel like for that one. I feel like Dory. I'm, I'm <laughs> telling you, right there, right there, that's where it all kind of went. Because yeah. first and foremost, we were always taught we are to take care of the house, the house of the Lord, and if you're called to ministry then you need to be here when the doors are open to minister to the people. There it is. Now, while all that is fine and dandy and great and true, what am I going to help the people with if I'm getting up there to sing right. Come on and now. minister, but there's tentacles coming out of my mouth because I want to kill my husband Jesus. because of the ride we just had coming to church. Yeah. Come on now, fussing and cussing right before I- before you hit the door, come on. We have we have had situations that while we're in church, <laughs> while we were in concert together, we were in concert together. This one, because we had it out on our way to the concert. This one sitting in the back there on the keyboard like this. <laughs> that sounds like the your sounds like your musicians are like I repented. I repented. <laughs> like, what the heck are you doing? I'm standing there because I can hear all of this in my ear. 
but I'm looking at the people and we're trying to sing and I'm just a <laughs> trying to get a mess. Hot right. mess. Oh, that, that was already in worship. The, for, the, the, the focus was on trying to be in ministry, but not actually hearing God say, go to that ministry, sing right. to that ministry, play for that ministry. We were not asking for that direction because we were always told you work while it's day. So wherever your hands find to do, you do it. Not as you say, this is how you build a relationship while you're doing it. Yes. That's the pivotal part that we didn't get in our early years. Yeah. The other, I'm sorry, I'm no, yeah, the other part that I, I wrote this down and I got this from Carlton Pearson a long time ago. This basically mm -hmm. sums it all up. The man out of his place makes the woman displaced, the children misplaced, and God ultimately replaced. Replaced. Yeah, yeah that is so that's so true. I've had that for years, and that explained basically our own downfall because it was so much of ministry, so much of you got to do this because you're called. Till I couldn't, my I couldn't identify my wife. I was like, "Look, you so anointed, you in tongues, and we trying to make love. I know I'm good." <laughs> She moved my face, and I was like, "Oh, this is getting ready to be a joyous occasion." Well, she actually <laughs> my hand, got down on her knees, and it was like, "Let's start praying." I was like, "What? Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Wait a minute! Hold on! Thank you." <laughs> when I say that, I was really confused. I, that's real. I, I I didn't even I couldn't even pray. I was like, "Huh?" <laughs> oh my goodness. <laughs> that's your ego. That's your ego. Your ego all jacked up. You know what I'm saying? He got to And then he had to go to work. <laughs> oh my goodness. Oh man. Hey, hey, too, hey, much, hey, too much hey, confusion. Hey, too much confusion in the home. So I was like, God. okay, Lord, look, you really going to have to speak because <laughs> we, are, we are at. <gasps> We're, we're at wits end. I'm at my wits end. I don't care what nobody says. <laughs> I have no other heads to think about right now because they've all been. Like, <laughs> they've all had a release. <laughs> yeah. It wasn't even a release. It was a tease. I was like, okay, you heard me, but you didn't quite hear me. Okay. I, I just had a prayer at that moment. I'm sorry. I just had a prayer. Um, right. What had happened oh. was. <laughs> no, no. No, but no. I, I honestly will say that I, I don't want people, I don't want you to get the wrong idea. Being in ministry and being married is beautiful. It's when it's not when you're in ministry it together, but it's from the Lord. Right. You cannot put yourself in ministry and marriage and think that it's really going to do something. You got to right. be ready for it. You got to be ready for when you say you're going to be in ministry as a married yeah. couple. If you ain't ready for them darts and them fiery trials and all that coming at you. Don't do it. Right. Don't play with and it. And that's going to be our next episode, Marriage and Ministry, because I think a lot of people, oh they don't understand um, the attacks that come because you, you number one, are attacked the moment that you join in marriage. Something takes place. Something shifts spiritually. The enemy is so upset when you decide to actually step into that union and it's like all hell breaks loose. Right. Exactly. Different things that used to mm -hmm. affect you when you were dating was never an issue. Now all of a sudden that you're in union together, it's like, wait a second, whoa, like where how do we get here? Mm-hmm. Because you gotta live with it now. Right. And it's a it's the it is the dominance, it is the dominance of unity. That is what's that is what's really being attacked. And so mm -hmm. you know for me, I look at it as though it does it's not just if you're in ministry. You can be in business. You can, you know what I'm saying? You can just try to be the best parents you can be. You know what I'm saying? Because 
is the unity that 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 draws the problem mm-hmm. for everybody. You know what I'm saying? That does not have that same cohesiveness. You know, but when you put ministry on, because when you look at it, <clears throat> come on here, Jesus. Because when you look at it, your marriage itself is a ministry. Yeah. Because Absolutely. your marriage actually shows the structure of the kingdom of God, right. which a lot of marriages they do don't not understand. Not only that, it also shows the love that Christ has for his people and how he's coming back for his bride. <laughs> oh, we are the example. It is supposed to show yeah. how Christ loves his people. Right. And how he's coming back for his bride. And, and I will say this too is now now that there's so much you know mental health and counseling and all those things that are that are that's prevalent and that's the field that I'm in. However, there's no way me personally that we can truly help people mentally, emotionally, physically, spiritually. If we are not even, I mean, even a nano percent, not mm. ready, not sure, or not in relationship, it's not yeah. going to work. It right. is not going to work. It may look good for a minute. You might get all the, the responses and you might get all the tags and all this other stuff. But when it comes down to it and everything's turned off and you got to put your head on your own pillow, right. are you able to really say that you helped someone in this area because you are not even helped in this area? Yeah, mm-hmm. equally as important. Equally as important is, um, was God pleased? Right. Did you hear from Him on, definitively? Man. Like, like, look, I know I got a problem with that. I'd be like, Lord, did you say, Lord, no, a little bit louder. <laughs> Turn up the EQ. I, I, I need it. I need clarity. Give me some highs. Give me a little bass. You know, because I need to know exactly what you're saying. I don't want to miss this. And that right. was the difference in, uh. Our, our second marriage that was that was a, a, a very very distinct difference because I know I'm I'm head I'm head heavy I was like look if you don't speak I, okay you did say that didn't you, you sure? <laughs> I, heard, I, like, I heard you I heard you say that clearly you said soulmate you didn't say wife you didn't say girlfriend you said soul he said soulmate. I was like oh I said Lord 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 I'm not gonna question you no more, but you got jokes. It's all good. <laughs> oh wow! Oh wow! So, how did you get to that breaking point? Yeah. Oh, Yo, if you don't listen, listen, because we only got 13 minutes left. So okay. you already know. So as those of you that already know us, there's going to be a part two. Right. So we got to have them back. So, but tell, them, but. 13 minutes. If you don't finish it, oh God, I pray that room is made so we can get part two in. <laughs> but because of because that's what you heard, but didn't quite believe it. That's why you know I received from when you said it. How or what? Now we understand that you all had you all had everything that you was trying to balance, and when you thought you had the balance, you had the balance in the wrong area. So, but what got you to that point to say, you know what, Slim? <laughs> I'm out. Yeah. Um, what got you there? I'm going to be I'm gonna be transparent because I was the one who filed and I'm the one who served him. Um, she gets her ways. Just, just, <laughs> wait, just, just, I just put that up. That's, she gets what she wants. Go ahead. No, it, truthfully, it wasn't what I wanted. Um, but, <laughs> but, um, I will only say this for the time that we have, and it definitely is something I really want everyone to think about. You cannot have a successful marriage, career, life, anything if you take God out of any of it. Come it's on now. not going to work at all. When Amen. we left San Diego for our last duty station in Florida, truthfully, I thought out of Florida because I was like, oh, I'm going to go find me some new white friends, get rich. We're going to find some businesses and we'll be able to come home. <laughs> that was my thoughts, really, totally. And I was like, I've never been there, but I hear it's, you know, it's a retirement town. That means they're rich. They got money. We can find businesses. Absolutely. <laughs> complete opposite. Wow. So when we got stationed there, I had we had no idea we were going literally walking into an abyss because we were not ready for it 
when we wow. left our Latin church from here moving, my husband was already gone to Okinawa. So he wasn't even here when we moved. I moved, I had to move us, the kids, the house, the cars, everything by myself. by myself. But I was fine with that because I knew we were, you know, going to our next duty station, not knowing we were going to be set up for the greatest failure that we walked right into. Wow. wow. I walked off the plane and went to the liquor store. Because by the time I got to Florida, I was done. I was I was so sick of trying to live right and having mm. so many issues in that area with my husband. Wow. So I wow. said, okay, God, being that I guess I'm the more spiritual one and I'm not supposed to be, I'm done. You let him be the head then. I'm finished. I'm backing off, whatever. And when I tell you I did just that, I did just that after having so many issues in church and all this other kind of stuff. And I'm just talking about him and I, not church hurt with pastors and other people. Just right, like right. him and I coming home from services, arguing, screaming, yelling, fighting over church, not ministry, church. So wow. that was the, the, the bad taste that we got in our mouth. So when we left here and went to Florida, I was out. Deuces, I'm done with this. You want it, Lord? How long was that? It. How long were y'all here at that point? This was 14 years. Wow. Yeah, this was maybe, wow. maybe 10, 14 years. Because we were there six years. Yeah, we were in Florida for six years. So it was about yeah. 17, 18 years. But when we left here, we left from a Holy Ghost fire, rain down, revival, shut in. I mean, teaching off the chain. After 10 years, when we left here, we had zero. Literally zero. So we went to Florida and for six years, zero spirituality. So the the ministry that we were we were visiting there, we only visited a couple of times um, because of the distance that it was at first. But then also because I am very big on the altar. I've been working the altar since I was 14. And I know and I've seen what changes can take place during that time. When someone's right. heart is wide open, ready to receive, um, you don't know what they're going through. And right. I went up for prayer because that's exactly where we were. Um, there was so much other stuff going on in the background. You couldn't get a break. You heard all the other things going on. And I left there so frustrated because I know that God is the only way to help. But right. I wasn't strong enough to get to him on my own. Mm. I'm strong enough to get to him with my husband because he was the one that made me walk away, per se. Mm. But I didn't realize how much damage it was until a conversation him and I were having on the phone when we were in the midst of separation and divorce proceedings. And I said to him, I left God for you. Whoa. And I wow. could have died in those six years that I left the Lord for you. And this is how we're going to end up. I mean, to feel that, to know that, to hear you say that to yourself, I was completely mortified when I said it because I didn't even realize it until I said it. Mm. And hey, I want to dig into that. We ain't got no time, so I'll tell you what, though. Uh, oh, you want to say so much, I, I just want to. So really, how? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. So how do you get to that point? And why do you say that you love God for your husband? Because that's going to bless somebody. Yes. I began even in Virginia. It started in Virginia. Oh, wow. Um, when we were just learning how to be in ministry, I just knew that I had to submit to my husband. The wife submits to the husband. He loves the wife as Christ loved the church. And all this, you know, what the scripture says. Oh, my goodness. That this is what's going Ooh, on. And, oh, no, that's not what was going on. And what I did is I ended up putting him up here. Yes. He was yes. on such a high pedestal for me that when I didn't get covered, I didn't get security. I didn't get, you know, the encouragement, the spiritual portions yes. of this. I wasn't getting any of that. I was literally left on my own devices spiritually. But being married and being one, completely confused, completely yes. confused. So everything we try to do, even in counseling, uh, is working. Why? Because the person we needed to con con uh, have counseling with was 
the Lord. Right. You never asked him. Oh, wow. Talk to the people. Right. Wow. That is so key. Oh, my God. Ooh, and hey. that's what I'm with pastors and first ladies and bishops. Mm. And, you wow. need, and you needed the Holy Spirit. The Holy because Spirit. he's the one who teaches us all, all things. things. Okay. Yes. And, and think about this, too, though. The Holy Ghost is not uh, an, an ungentleman. He's a gentleman. He's yeah. not going to beat and badger you. What he right. did for us in Florida, he was there as a silent partner. Mm. And I Wait say that because Wait. I Wait. didn't hear Wait. Him. Wait. Come on now. So so I, I, love him. Him. Uh -huh. I didn't hear nothing. So he was my silent partner because there were so many nights to this very day. I don't remember going to sleep or waking up. Wow. Wow. Damn, this thing get juicy. So I yes. hate it. Oh, no, okay, no, 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 you got Hey, this you thing, got this thing oh, is so juicy. Woo. Hey, listen, I know, again, we're, we're with Tasha and Clinton Smith with uh, Restoration Ministries out of San Diego, California. We do thank God for you all being with us. I'm going to tell y'all right now, there's going to be a part two. There's going to be a part two. Because we got to get it. <laughs> and, because, and we make even invite them into the marriage and ministry because I think that it's really important for everybody to understand oh, yeah. like what is going on and how ministry, if it's not done right, affects your marriage. Right, because that's the part right there. That's oh yeah, we're going to bring that part back. But we got to, we're going to, part yeah. two, we're going to continue the story on the divorce and them coming back together now in having things, I guess I'll say in, in right order from what uh, Clinton has said earlier. So tune in because we want to know how much it costs them or to get divorced. <laughs> because we want to know how My much it Mary and the process to that. So thank you so much I for joining, you. for tuning in. Thank you so much. Um, if you want to connect with us, make sure that you go to marriage takeover at gmail.com. If you want to connect with Clinton and Tasha Smith, uh, you can connect with them. Tasha, uh, uh, and tell them how they can get in contact with you. Uh, my wife's got the email address and everything set up already. You guys should have it. If not, no, it for is. the people, babe. Just tell them. Right now, right now. Right now. Hey, Tasha, tell us, please. <laughs> if you would definitely like to contact us, um, whether by Facebook or simply by email, um, my email is T, like Tasha, Q for Queen, Smith, S M I T H 74 at gmail.com. Our uh, ministry is Restoration Ministries. The website is ready to go. But now, um, since my, my mama, Tamika, said I have to launch, <laughs> we will be. But you can definitely be yeah, right now. For, for the other gentlemen. We are know. pushing that ministry forward, huh? Uh, uh, yes, please push. Because <laughs> yeah. even though it's, it's healing me, even as I'm listening. So absolutely, I, I got a lot more to do. I have a lot more learning to do, and this is definitely hey, the first we step. All do steps. We are all, we all have a lot of learning. And, and here you're talking about we see. I ain't got time. I know. I got two minutes. <laughs> I got two minutes. But because I'm gonna tell you, it's gonna. You're gonna. You're never gonna stop learning. It's gonna be a continual learning. It's just that you have to remain open to receive what God is teaching you. And you have to be able to hear what God is saying from the voices that he uses. Right. Amen. Amen. So, I just realized we didn't pray when we opened up for the people. So y'all, please forgive us. Yeah. Don't hold us. Don't, oh, don't, yeah. don't, don't, yeah, don't listen, please, y'all don't. But hey, we gonna pray you know on what? the way out. Hey, um, Tasha, go ahead and pray us out real quick. Yes, sir. Father God, in Jesus' name, first God, we thank you for life. We thank you for health. We thank you for strength. We thank you for life on uh, on top of the ground. God, we thank you that we are still able to help others with your guidance, yes. with your control, oh God, with you showing us exactly where to go and what to do and what to say, oh God. We are nothing without you, oh God. Father, yes. God, if every person who hears, who sees, who understands, who is looking for understanding and clarity regarding marriage and the family and marriage and ministry and marriage and just being a person, God, we yes. ask that you enlighten us 
so that we may enlighten others, oh God. Father, we ask that this never return unto you, Lord, oh God, that we don't do anything that is not like you in ministry, oh God. And once, if we do, that we will walk the right way, oh God, and correct us yes. and ask for repentance, oh God, and keep going, oh God, and not stop. God, we thank you for our hosts, oh God. We thank you for our brother and our sister, Eric and Tamika, and their family, oh God, for they have been a blessing to us for so long and to all the people, oh God. We thank you and praise you, Lord Jesus, and ask, oh God, that you just be with us in the next segment. In Jesus' name, Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you so much for tuning in. Thank you for joining. If you want to be a guest on the show, you want to submit a writing, make sure you reach out to us at marriagetakeover at gmail.com. Amen. It's your girl, Tamika Thompson. It's your boy, you rock now. Marriage Takeover, sign it out. Mahalo. Thank you for tuning in to Marriage Takeover. Connect with us on Facebook at Marriage Takeover. 